Welcome to our short webinar on rootstock inventory management. So let's get started. Get you kind of under the covers a little bit on inventory management, how to balance out you know, inventory and customer demands and, and all that, because the, really the byproduct of not doing that and not having good inventory is, is pretty harsh. You know, you lose, lose business to customers who may have the product on hand where you may not, or uh, I see a lot of companies that end up having an exorbitant amount of, of expedited freight charges over the years because they just they're constantly having to overnight goods because they can't plan uh, inventory accurately so uh, so let's get you into some of the things that rootstock can do to to alleviate that what we're looking at is a dashboard and this might just be a, a mock view or a view into the world of rootstock from uh, from a dashboard perspective and the, the beauty of rootstock being within salesforce is that it's just it's all the look and feel of salesforce so if you're familiar with that uh, you can see up on the top, even we have links to go to, you know, to opportunities, customers, you know, right into things that are rootstock specific, like managing products and sales orders. And there's purchase orders that we manage. So we're, we're really the end to end solution that's going to take things from a customer forecast all the way through to inventory, planning, receiving, shipping, manufacturing, as, as Tom uh, discussed a little bit earlier. So graphically speaking, you know, a dashboard, you know, we, we've got the ability to look at things and plan because we can take a look at, at opportunities. So we can even help plan inventory based on potential incoming business that we're getting uh, on, on the sales side. And then we manage things, we manage sales orders, sales activity, purchasing, and then just as a, as a snapshot view, just taking a look at some of the uh, views in the inventory, maybe inventory valuation, uh, on-hand quantities by project. Uh, so we can manage. We'll, we'll dig into that a little bit deeper, and then have, having links to get into you know other areas of the application. We we tend to use these for for demo purposes, but you can easily you have user defined links that you go that you can access to get to anywhere you want to go uh, in the system. So in order to before you can plan inventory, you you really have to know what you have in stock. So let's take a look at a uh, common report inventory by location, and this is going to give us a view then into you know what we have at any given time. This is number. This number of reports just happens to be one of the most common ones, and it's using a, a standard Salesforce platform tool, uh, which is just a list view. So, uh, it, important part here though is that in today's market, most companies, your, yours probably does if you're a product company, you may have warehouses or facilities uh, all over the country, if not all over the world. And views like this in real time, you give you the ability to take a look and see, you know, what, where are my sites? So you can define sites in the system. They can be an individual warehouse or maybe a campus of warehouses. Uh, it could be a, a contract manufacturer, 3PL, you name it. Uh, so you can define that by site. You can also define things by location ID, which might be either a physical or even a logical location within a facility. It might be your raw raw goods location or your finished goods stock or maybe even inspection location uh, which we'll get into a little bit deeper near the end of the, of the presentation today uh, so really a lot of flexibility as to as to how you can track inventory and then going down to things like a location number when we when we showed those slides you saw an image of a warehouse that had you know aisles and racks and rows and shelves so it can go down to that level and this might be you know aisle one rack one shelf two or something like that uh, so we can easily then send a material handler right to the right spot. It can mobily uh, be, you know, receiving goods, picking goods, shipping things, uh, all, all in real, you know, getting, having real time visibility to all the inventory. Then obviously we've got, you know, what, what's on hand. So that, that's the big, that's the big thing. What do we have in these different locations at any given time? And as transactions are occurring, as we're shipping goods, receiving goods, this is again, all being uh, impacted in real time. Many companies, especially in regulated industries, need to manage things like lot numbers and serial numbers. So things like lot traceability, lot expiration dates, uh, that's all key. So we, we do a phenomenal job of managing uh, lots and uh, planning around lots and manufacturing around lots and things like that. Uh, so that's, that's a key aspect uh, of what we do within, within the solution. And then because this is a list view, I can easily just go ahead and say, you know, I just want to see what's in a particular contract manufacturer that I have. So we'll take a look at my contract manufacturing location, and here's all my products within there. So even though this might be on the other side of the world, um, I've got my view into just inventory at that location. And then we mentioned uh, lot numbers. So let's take a look at that in a little more detail. So it's, not, it's one thing to track a lot number, know the expiration date, but the, the key aspect too is to know 
you know, what's been going on with a particular lot number. And I can just use the Salesforce global search feature here to put in a lot number. And it'll give me every occurrence of that lot. What, anything, anything where we transacted against it, where we might have produced around it. So all the information that you'd want to do uh, to access for any kind of lot traceability. So PO receipts, inventory by lot number, where it might have been used in a work order. So it's a work order component. And that's been put into either a, maybe a finished good manufacturing order or a subassembly cost transactions, you name it. So again, easy ways to look at inventory in real time, look at lot information in real time, and do that, do that lot traceability. So the, that, that's kind of the baseline for planning. You've got to know what you have in stock. And then to give you a little bit of a background on the planning side of things. So here's, here's kind of the, what we call material requirements planning with rootstock in a nutshell. Uh, these look like little, like little buckets or maybe closer to the weekend, they might look like martini glasses. So whatever you want to look at them as. But here's our, our planning size. We have demand. Demand could come in in different ways. We have forecasts. So it can be a customer forecast. It can be a forecast coming in through, uh, through even like Einstein Analytics. We have customers that use Einstein Analytics to generate their sales forecast with you know, intelligence and then it feeds right into Rootstock. Uh, we have things like open sales orders. So that's, that's uh, open demand and open work orders for maybe manufactured items. So that's our demand side. And then supply side is saying, okay, what do we have currently in inventory, which we just looked at? Uh, what, we, what have we already planned for already? What's the engine, the MRP engine already done <coughs> to say that you know, we've got some existing planned purchase orders? Or for manufactured items, you know, we might have some existing planned work orders. And then by item, and we have a lot of flexibility in the system, which we'll get you under the cover soon, to be able to set up things like MRP and material requirements planning policies. Uh, maybe the quantities that we want to put into, into a policy. And then importantly, things like lead times, production lead times, vendor lead times, all that then feeds into the MRP planning engine. And what results we get from that, or actually let's, let's take, kind of dive into one of the items and some of those planning policies and lead times. So in here, I'm at a finished good level and I've got maybe an item where I, I sell, you know, case of 24 bottles of, of four ounce uh, body oil. The manufactured item, you know, I inventory in cases, uh, I might be able to, you know, sell in different units of measure. So across the board, we can manage different units of measure of inventory as well in all the different conversions. <clears throat> but for here, we've got a manufactured item. We may want to plan this using different methods. So, you know, we have the ability to do a lot for lot, which says that if I have demand for 100, I'm going to plan for 100 in a given period. Uh, things like days cover might say, you know, if in a, if, if I have a lead time of 30 days, I might just want to bundle all my demand up into 30 days and say, just cover me for 30 days. And then it'll just keep on kicking out work orders in this case every 30 days. Uh, or we can just, you know, eliminate it from, from planning or even just have simple reorder point. So these are all feeding the engine, things like maximum quantities, uh, safety stock level. That's a key thing that feeds the, the engine. So what do we always want to have on hand to make sure that, we, that we're never out of stock completely? And the better we manage and plan, the better we can, the more we can lower that number um, and have less inventory in stock, but yet still meet customer demands. And then lead times for manufactured item would be things like maybe a work order release time, or how long does it take to, to typically pick for a work order, or maybe a manufacturing lead time. So all these things are playing into the decisions of how to tell the planner what to do, you know, what work orders to create, how many to create them for, and when to kick them off. So with that, we run the engine, we run the MRP engine, and we would get results like this here. Here's a, what we call a summary review by item. <coughs> and it's got our forecast. So we, we pulled in our forecast in this case for particular uh, you know, monthly buckets, 1,000, 1,200, 1,300. But then as we're going on, we're creating active sales orders. So if a sales order gets, gets created, then that can be netted in within that forecast and we're still going to plan around making a thousand of this item. So we're kind of consuming the forecast with actual orders. If this item were ever to exceed the forecast, then our planned work order would then mirror what our active sales orders are and not the forecast. So always balancing, again, forecast with, with uh, actual demand. And then ultimately, it's going to keep planning these work orders so that we have accurate safety stock 
in uh, at each at the end of each month, so 100. So that's kind of just a little under the covers on the manufacturing side. But then within this this case of a product, we have a, a raw material item. So here's our raw material item. We might buy uh, inventory this in gallons. We might buy it in big drums. It's a purchase item. And the MRP policies that are that are applicable here are the same thing. I do lot for lot or reorder point, days cover. But then things that are important to us are going to be, again, safety stock and lead time. So maybe a ship vendor shipping lead time, maybe an inspection lead time. This might come in and we always maybe have to take a day to move it through the inspection process. So all of these are, are factoring in, in in running this this engine. Now on the on the raw material side, here we go. We've got now it's telling us our demand is coming from work orders, work orders for that finished good that we just looked at. So no longer a forecast, but actual and planned work orders. We have our on hand quantity, our safety stock level again, and it's going to tell us that now here's what we need what we need to plan to buy. So planned requisitions. So by this much this month, this much here, it's going to take into consideration maybe open requisitions, open purchase orders, all that. And if we drill into one of these, I can kind of go in and take a look at the kind of nuts and bolts behind here. We'll see that the the real key here is that for each of these planned requisitions, we have a scheduled dock date. So that was we needed to get this before the beginning of June. So it, or actually it was 527 with the due date on that. So we have a due date of 527 as we see here. But the engine's now telling us we need to start firming up a, a PO way early, back in 413. So this is guiding the planner, guiding the buyer as to when they need to start cutting a PO to ensure that they get the inventory in-house at the right time and not too soon and not too late. It's kind of a, almost trying to meet like a just-in-time methodology. So that's really the uh, the the meat and potatoes, and th this is why people come to us. Because imagine trying to manage this process and you know what what to buy, when to buy, when to firm up. If you're trying to manage, you know, a thousand items, ten thousand items, a hundred thousand items. So regardless of that size, that MRP engine just runs and it guides people, like planners and buyers, into what they should be buying. <clears throat> so now, as a buyer, as a buyer, I simply have a workbench I can go to, and this workbench allows me to, to hone in on particular days or maybe a particular uh, vendor in this case, and then say, okay, you know what? Today, what should I be buying, or what should I be firming up? What PO should I be or requisites should I be firming? What should I be placing? What POs? So it simply goes ahead and looks throughout the entire, you know, world of inventory and plan requisitions, and allows me to then select any number of these and move them into more of a firm and approved state, and ultimately create those POs and send them to the vendor uh, on time, so that they, by the time they send us the goods, it's going to be consumed with uh, in production accurately, or it's there to meet my my customer demand if it's a finished item that I'm buying. So that's that's in a nutshell. I just wanted to make sure everybody understands just the value of that, especially at a high volume, high level of of, of uh, inventory items. Uh, if your company has that that level, and then another thing that impacts inventory is the quality of inventory. So whether it be items that you're manufacturing or product that you may be buying from vendors, most of the time companies want to be able to inspect that that inventory and make sure that it's good. Because if you if you have scrap or if you have bad inventory, that's going to affect your ability to you know deliver to customers again or to um, you know create the and manufacture product as you need to. So we can easily if if you have an item or multiple items that need inspection, we can actually automate the creation of inspection order upon receipt of goods or upon creation of a you know of a production order, and that order can have different inspection instructions. So in this case, maybe there's you know, a visual view, they, they measure the thickness of something, uniformity, what have you, whatever the case may be for your company. If you have detailed instructions that the that the uh, you know, receiving person can follow, and then ultimately they can determine, you know, what's what's good, you know, what's okay, what needs to be scrapped, what may, might need to go to yet another level of inspection. And then in that case, you can, we can even automate the transfer of inventory from say receiving or inspection into more of a scrap location or a different disposition location or a finished goods location 
or if it's you know, if for anything that might pass in good quality. That's all automation that's going to be helping to assist with uh, inventory management. And then last but not least, let's talk, let's kind of wrap this up and give, get you into an, yet another visual of what you could be looking at if you're managing inventory uh, in rootstock. So here's, uh, you know, there's things like Einstein analytics, but you've also got just native uh, reports and native snapshots that can hone in on things like, you know, detail lot expiration. Uh, you can drill into any of these and take a look at what the detail lot information. Uh, another important thing is order fill rates. So this is directly tied to inventory management, inventory accuracy. Because if you're if we're not able to, if we don't have the inventory, we can't ship it. We have to maybe uh, ship it late or ship it without the right quantity, and that's going to affect our fill rate. So if we can look at this information, that can be a a guide as to you know what we need to do to tweak some of our inventory levels. Uh, inbound production, uh, in, inbound inventory, maybe by product line, just seeing, hey, what do we got coming in across different product lines and so forth. So just want to paint you the picture that once you have, you know, once you're managing orders and inventory and receiving and purchasing all in one system, you can get that full loop of reporting to make sure that you're managing it uh, accurately.